Well, there's lovely laughter. Hello. Uh, We're at uh, Hampton Court. Of course we are. Why wouldn't we be? Uh, Because the person I'm going to talk to today uh, lives a bit near Hampton Court. I'm not going to give her full address. I live near Hampton Court. So it seemed like a good thing to do. Come to the Mitre Hotel. Come and say hello. Who is she? Mm. Well, she's actress, singer, writer, presenter. Is there anything she hasn't done? She loves fizzy drinks. It's Martine McCutcheon. (laughs) No! Hello. I'm so excited to be doing this. You've had such amazing guests on. Me and my hubby were so excited for us to go, this is our job today. We're going to go and see Rob. And I'm a massive fan. And I've never been good at playing it cool in my life. So, yeah. (laughs) Oh, Hi. well, this, is, this reflects very well on me, doesn't it? Yeah, this is, it this, does. This take it, take makes it. me look good. But when we were getting ready to start, you let slip. You, you were concerned. People might think that's a brand, brandy, and brandy Coke. Coke. It's yeah. not. It's, it's Dr. Pepper. <laughs> if, if they'd like to send us money, it's <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Martine was just telling me as well. <laughs> For years, she thought that my surname was Rydon. <laughs> Because the B at the end of Rob and the B at... Well, you can work it out. I'm dying. I and, and she dying. said she thought that was my porn name. <laughs> Rob Rydon. And nobody told me. My husband, my management, until today, they were like... Today? They told you today? Today. Today. They told me today. And they were like, just to let you know, it's, it was, I thought it was a spell check, but you've said this many times. It's not Rob Rydon. It's Rob Bryden. And I was like... Oh, yeah, I've kind of seen it spelt like that with all the things I've seen him in. But for some reason, in my head, you were the 80s Don of the Don porn star called Rob Rydon. When you say Rydon, that's how different we are. You think porn name, I think Rydon Lawnmower. Do you know what? That is the sweetest of the sweetest thing. Thank and you. it just goes to show that my mind is still in the gutter. You can take the girl out of Dalston. What can I say? Here's what's interesting about you one of many things, I'm always interested in the people that went to drama school Mm. and we have stories about, I mean, I I didn't get into RADA, hard to believe, but true. And people often tell, thank you, tell stories about how they tried for this school or that school. But you were a step further because you went to the famous, within our world anyway, the famous Italia Conti Mm. school, Mm. which will be a familiar name to people like me who who do what I do. Maybe some of the people watching don't know. Can you explain what that was? I basically went to a local dance school where this old lady said to my mum, actually, Jenny, she's quite good. She's not just a jumping bean. Like, she's she's Mm. quite a good dancer. And she said there's a school that Martine could go to called the Italia Conti School. Um, I know a lady who went there who danced for Malcolm and Wise and all these variety shows, and she's now a teacher. And I went to see her and she said, I'm going to train you up for a year, you can audition. Um, I knew I'd need a scholarship. I auditioned and I got in and it was like an English fame. You've got kids tap dancing about and ballet shoes and, you know, music playing everywhere. And I felt like I'd died and gone to heaven. You loved it. I absolutely loved it. I'd had a difficult upbringing with domestic violence in the family and it was a place that I felt felt safe. And when I used to watch movies and when I used to watch um, musicals and things like that, it was my safe place. I never thought anything bad could happen to you there. Was it in your family performing? No. So how did your mum react then? Because she absolutely adored me, and it's kind of me and her against the world, even though she didn't really think it, she'd say to me, when people say, why you, you say, why not? Yeah, good. It's got to happen to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's got to happen to someone, you know, and sometimes it happens to people that are rubbish. <laughs> and, you're, and you're really good. <laughs> oh, good, yeah. You know? Sometimes they'll be rubbish, <laughs> like you. Like you. You're rubbish, so <laughs> it, it, it could happen for you, Martine. <laughs> You've got to believe in how rubbish you are and just hope for chance. So... At what age did you leave Italia Conti? So I left Italia Conti. I got expelled. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Here's this, this least end urchin and she's, she's, <laughs> she's gone to Italia Conti. She's got this God-given town. She, she's, and was... the whole time I'm walking around like Eponine from Les Mis with mud on my face. What do you mean you got expelled? For doing what? When you get out of pigtails at Italia Conti, they're not quite sure the agency what to do with you. And the second day that I was there, I got a job. 
And I was doing an advert for somewhere in Saudi Arabia for, I think it was chocolate swish rolls or something or, or arms, bizarre. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> something like, yeah, something like Kalishnikov that. Kalishnikov rifles. Something right. harmless. Yeah. Armless. Huh. All good. Uh, that was good, wasn't it? Was it's wrapping this off, Rob. It's wrapping yeah. off. Um, fucking, yeah. And I used to work quite a lot and I did a West End show with Anthony Newley when I was like 13. Oh, and- so you could work while also doing your studies there? Well, no, that's why I got expelled. I kept telling them, oh, I'm, I'm not well. I've got um, shingles or I've got yeah. s- something. And really, I was filming the bill. <laughs> and, and then they'd see the bill. And then they, I didn't realise that the bill was going to be shown the day before certificate day. And then I was told, you know, my headmaster loved me, Mr. Bo. We got him really, really well. I adored him. And he was a champion of the kids. He was so brilliant. And I knew he regretted it, but it was like, listen, if you're doing it and you're doing yes. it with an agency that's not within the school, you know, yeah. I can't allow it. I'll let you finish your GCSEs, but officially, like, we've got to expel you. So you, out you come. You're, how old? 16, did you say? Six, uh, 16, yeah. And I okay. was in a girl group, um, yes. Milan. Yes. Now, tell me about Milan. So I saw the stage advert, the advert in the paper. All oh, right. And thought, oh, God, I haven't got the guts to go on my own. So I roped in two of my friends. Yeah. We turned up dressed up as a mixture of Gloria Estefan and the Bangles <laughs> and saying one, two, three by Gloria Estefan and... One, two, three... For, come, come on, baby, baby say you love, love me five, six, seven times. times. Ooh, oh, yeah, you know it. She said yeah. those leather chap things. Of, yeah. Is it chaps or chaps? Uh, I don't think she was fussy. <laughs> I know she wore cowboy trousers. What are um, they called? You know what Rob Rydon. You know what they say about Gloria? Rob Rydon, the Western. Yeah, I'm enjoying that. <laughs> Thanks for that. That's two cowboys who've enjoyed themselves. Too much? Too much, maybe. <laughs> You be the judge. I mean, like riding the horse. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. The actress Martine McCutcheon speaking oh, earlier today at Hampton I'm fanning Court. myself down. Haven't we all? Um, oh. Now, so, all right, so you're there and you're auditioning as we Laurie Estelle, And it obviously went very well. Yeah, we got the job. And we were signed to Polydor Records. And that then the next thing... That must have felt exciting. Oh, I thought it was going to be Madonna. So what did your mum say to that? She was like, crikey, you are quite good at all this. But at that stage, are you thinking, well, I'm going to be a singer? Or are you still thinking I'm going to be an actress? Or is it both? When I first saw um, Blackadder, me and my mum would howl. Yeah. I mean, I, I watched it and Asia shouldn't have watched it, but we, she, we didn't care. Yeah. And I absolutely adored it. I just loved the writing yeah. and I just fell a bit in love with Richard Curtis's writing. I know of other people who were involved, Ben Elton and blah, blah, blah. But... I kind of was interested in stuff like that, very young. Mm. And then when I saw For Weddings and a Funeral, Uh I fell in love with, you know, Hugh Grant and, again, Richard's writing. Yes. And I just thought, I want to do movies like that. That's what I want to do. And then I went to see Notting Hill. Mm. And I went on my own, got a box of popcorn because I just didn't want anyone distracting me because I knew I was going to be in love with it. And I sat there and I just had this... This weird feeling, somehow, some way, I've got to make it happen so that I work with these people. So, Richard had seen me in EastEnders, then he'd seen, you know, my pop career, and then he'd seen My Fair Lady, and had followed my career, and so had his other half, Emma Freud. And after My Fair Lady, which was one of the best and worst times of my life because the reviews were amazing, but I'd worked so hard and been, you know, a child actress for so many years that my body just bailed on me. And I was diagnosed with ME. I'd been in intensive care. They didn't want that to get out into the press. And it was a really, for a 23, 24-year-old, it was a really harrowing time. And it was a time when the tabloids were at their, their height. And I didn't know how to handle it. I buckled a bit under the pressure. And I thought, I'm going to give up the industry. I'm not in love with it anymore. I I love it, but I don't like what goes with it. I love the show, but I don't Mm. love the business. Mm. Mentally, I was, you know, really down. And I went to see some friends in Spain. I sat on the plane and I remember thinking, I feel so lost because this has been like my religion, my escape, my everything. And I don't know who I am or what I'm going to do without all of this stuff. And you've got to give me one massive sign, God or universe or whatever, to make me think that I'm meant to stay in this stinking industry because at the moment I hate it. And I went out and um, the next day 
in the villa, the phone went. My friend came out and said, it's your agent on the phone and hope you don't mind, got the number from your mum. He needs to speak to you. And he said to me, I know you told me never to call you ever again. Are you hate the stinking industry. <laughs> um, but the maddest things happen. Richard Curtis has called and he said that um, he has, you know, got a part for you opposite Hugh Grant. <laughs> I remember just looking up at the sky and just thinking, fuck, like, you don't muck around, do you? Whatever you, <laughs> like, whatever this is, like, whatever you are, like, this is huge, this is weird. And he said, you know, do you want to come back for, for the read-through? I was like, yeah, I think I kind of <laughs> love the industry a little bit again. <laughs> wow. And I came back and I was still very, very um, unconfident and I sat there sort of shaking and I never forget Alan Rickman the late Alan Rickman was so sweet. He kicked me under the table and he said, are you okay? Because he could see as I was turning the pages, my hands were shaking. And I said, yeah, I'm just so scared. I'm so nervous. I'm going to muck it up. You know, this is, my, this is like, you don't know how much this is to me. And uh, he said, don't worry, darling. We're all scared. We're just acting like we're not. Uh -huh. Act like you're not. And that will help you as an actress. And the minute he said that, I got it. I was like, don't be you. Act. Oh. How and lovely, lovely. um and I never forget that he was so lovely, and then yeah read read through it and since found out the part was written for me. Wow! Tell me about filming scenes with Hugh Grant, who I'm a big fan of. What I felt with Hugh and Richard was they they seemed to be very um, protective of me, oh. and I felt like they really wanted me to shine, obviously for the project, but I think. They'd also seen, you know, the press and my, I was still very young. I can still see in the film some of my vulnerability, which works. You know, she's... Yeah, well, that comes innocent. across in the part <clears throat> and you're just using something that you have yeah. for the role. Um, the, the, the very much, you know, the essence of who I was, you know, at that time. But again, you know, Richard, he was very gracious too in the fact that he'd say, oh, you know, we're going to just film this bit here when... Um, when Hugh walks away and just ad lib, just do something. It's not going to be on the film. Oh, did he say that? And, oh, and I said, oh, did you hear what I just said? I just went Bleh, to the prime minister and they used it in the film. You won, he said, consulting his notes in a classic ride on way. <laughs> the MTV Movie Award for Best Transatlantic Breakthrough Performer yeah. for that film yeah. and the Empire Award for Best Newcomer. So when you're winning the Best Transatlantic Breakthrough Performer, do your thoughts then turn to America? Yes. So I met a lovely man, Charles Finch, who took me under his wing and just said, right, let's get you out to America. And then I joined an agency out in America and I had yeah. a credit card and I was at the Peninsula Hotel all my auditions, I didn't know anything about, you know, my pilot season or anything like who's, that. Who's paying for the Peninsula Hotel? Me, on a credit card, pr praying to God that I was going to get a job out there. Sweet Lord. <laughs> I know. How long? But how the long? reason why I did it, because there was a lady called Wendy on Concierge who knew every audition in Hollywood. Is that right? And she said to me, don't worry, I know every audition in town. So she told me about these agencies. I hired a mini. I remember driving on the freeway listening to um, White Snake singing, Here I go again yeah. on my own, <laughs> romanticising the whole thing. And uh, when really I was really scared, I was thinking, Oh God, what's going to go on? And luckily I got a pilot, and the pilot paid for my bill at the Peninsula. What was he on? Um, he was on a stopover or something? <laughs> what? Was he a well-paid pilot? What was he, British Airways, Virgin? Pilot, you know, pilot when you get a TV oh, show. Oh, pilot, yeah. Well, look, um, I think I think you're going to have to come back for another one because um, you are a you are a you are an encyclopedia of show business stories, which I is am. which is what I love. Why why don't you do a one woman show or something like that? Do you know what I would like to? I mean, for me. I took time out of the industry because my priority was to become a mother. Yes. And it took a lot longer than I thought I had. Because of the ME and my Lyme disease that I have, I had a lot of problems um, keeping babies. And so my 
the fluffy world of um, oh, yes. of tits and teeth didn't yes. didn't matter anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a far bigger lesson to be learned and a far bigger picture to be looked at. Okay, but now though, now, now he's seven. Yeah, I'm still a bit obsessed with being a mum. I still begrudge anything that takes me away from him for longer than a few hours yeah. because I'm so in love with him. Um, but I am starting to fall in love with the industry again and I am starting to like I'm doing a movie very small part of a ex-ballerina with John Cleese in Budapest this year oh are you and I'm doing a film next year by the same people funnily enough about an Elvis impersonator oh thank you very much so I am starting to look at things and entertain things and I am thinking about funnily enough doing almost like an evening with exactly well you could do a one woman show almost effortlessly. Thanks, Martine. Thanks I've for, loved for coming it. in. Is that it? Have we done it? It's flown by. It's flown by. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, until the next time, we say bon voyage, adieu, and willkommen from. And from, see you later. From Hampton Court. <laughs> Thanks, Martine. Thank you, darling. I've loved it. <laughs> <laughs>